I remember the day they brought Jimmy Cagney in to screen test him because he was 81, upstate New York. He, they wanted, Milos Forman wanted him for the uh, commissioner. But Jimmy Cagney was going, I'm too old, I can't do it. I don't have a memory, I don't have, I can't, I'm saying, and the, Milos wouldn't let up. So Cagney said, I want to be screen tested just so you can see and so I can see. So they rented a studio in Midtown Manhattan and they brought in Kenny McMillan and the, the cops and the fire guys, just, and I was one of those guys. And we just, we're going to do a four page scene with the commissioner. And they brought Cagney in on two canes. Mm. And they sat him down. And you could see, 81, but it was still Cagney, but oh, he was tired. And they started doing the scene, and he couldn't, couldn't remember the next line. To say, and he'd had it for a week, and just couldn't do it. Milo said, okay, it's okay, and he cut two pages right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> so he does it again, and still, it's line to line. And you can, now I'm, that I was older, you could just see Milos is going, I will cut, I will edit, I will make this, I would, you know. Whatever, whatever it whatever, takes me to I work. just get, if I get one word, one word. So, <laughs> and it got down to one page and four lines. And you could, Cagney started to remember and didn't have to go down to the script. And, and back then, the little black and white TV monitors, you could see Cagney's face. And you could see him become Jimmy Cagney. You could see it, and you're going, oh, my God, that's what they talk about. Right, right, right. And, you know, he does this pointing thing at Kenny McMillan, which he ended up doing in the movie. And, and it was the only other guy I've seen do that yeah. in that kind of star thing is Clint. Clint was the other guy. I did a movie with him called Blood Work. And... He directed it and starred in it, and, and he's just the nicest, lowest key guy in the world. And um, when they put the camera on him, we're doing a driving shot. I'm driving. Clint's here. Put the camera on him, and he's all right. Yeah, just yeah, right. you know. And, and and then right, I roll it, and you can just see it happen. You can just see him become Clint Eastwood. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets to the end of it. And Clint won't say action, he won't say cut, you know, because his, his thing, and it's true, it's from all his horse movies early on, Rawhide, I think. They wouldn't say action because the horses all jump. <laughs> <laughs> so actors are just, you know, like animals, I guess. So he would just go, go ahead. And then it gets to the end of it, and he, he, he would just go, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> yeah. But he, 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 he's Clint, he's Clint, he's Clint. And you're just watching it going, watch the road, watch the road. Don't look at Clint, don't look at Clint, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, and you're just seeing it. And then he gets to the end of it and he goes, all right, that's enough of that. <laughs> it's just, uh, Cagney and Clint were the two guys I saw that's do it. that. Well, now having listened to your Milos Foreman and your Clint impressions, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to hear about Woody Allen. <laughs> Because, you know, those, those two films, Radio Days, I think, didn't really get the attention. It's a terrific movie. Yeah, I thought so. But Purple Rose at Cairo is obviously a very important film in your career. Oh, huge And a me. terrific film on its own and an important film in his filmography. Yeah, and, I, and I've read where Woody really loves that movie mainly because the completed product was closest to what he'd envisioned right. when he wrote it. So this one was a lot of responsibility. There were two leading roles in a Woody Allen movie and... Yeah. Everything I've ever learned, please let me remember now. That's what I, that was my little mantra every day. Yeah. Um, but halfway through that movie, Woody told me I was good. And for a young actor who would, would care about the New York Times review, that's it. Didn't matter. It was also that Woody Allen, not this Woody Allen. It was Woody Allen at a time when his career was really at, at, its, uh, at its height, right? Okay. <laughs> well, don't you think? I mean, uh, it's, I, I think it's probably different to be in a Woody Allen movie now than it was then. Okay, yeah, I, I think, I, sure, I, I, I'm a big fan of Woody. So you, you would be in a Woody Allen movie now if he calls you? Oh, without, my without God, question. yeah. Well, when, when's the plane leave? Seriously? Yeah, because and, and it's also, I mean, you got to admire the fact, sure, you, the, the beautiful thing about a Woody or, or somebody like Woody or Clint is that, that we all get to now look at all 70 films he made and go, well, which ones were good? That's true. And the fact that longevity in a business that doesn't give a damn about you is to be admired.
I'm not enough of a film expert to know whether he's got another great film in him. I don't know. I, I, hope, I hope he keeps trying. His, uh, his process of working is always said to be different from other directors, and the, the audition process and the way he works, how much he tells you. Is the legend of Woody Allen in that respect true in your experience? I was, um, yeah, you're told, um, I don't know how he does it now, but I was in, in the middle 80s, you're told, um, go meet Woody Allen. I'm going, oh, okay. And it's, they said it's going to be two minutes. Don't take it personally. He does it with A-list people. It's two minutes. It's his thing. He'll come out. He'll ask you a couple questions. He'll probably take a Polaroid of you at the time, and that'll be it. Right. Don't get all, okay. And that's what it was. You show up as the editing room in New York and around the corner, and it's Annie Hall. It's the corduroys. It's the glasses. It's everything. It's just there he is. And <clears throat> hi, you know, just want to, you know, just say hello. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, and you're going, well, yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> Do you mind if I, uh, you know, take a picture of, you know, just, Jane, get a picture. Okay, you know, uh, we'll let you know. <laughs> that was pretty much it, huh? That was, the, that, was, that was that. And then I, it was December, and then I went off and did some Christmas shopping because I'm going, well, this isn't going to happen. And uh, got back to my apartment back when they were answering machines, and there were 12 messages from my agent, Paul, going, where have you been? Get down to 57th and 7th. Woody wants to screen test you this afternoon out in New Jersey. Boom, boom, boom. I go out there, um, screen test. Here's Mia Farrow. Um, hello. And, <laughs> and you're doing these two scenes. Does, he, he tells you one is a Hollywood actor who's insecure in the 30s, and the other is a character in a movie that's just come off the screen. That's all you're told. OK, so you do it. I, I sit down, start taking off the costume that they had, and Woody comes over and he goes, what have you, know, what have you, um, you, know, what have you, um, you know, been in? And I had completely blanked. I, <laughs> Terms of Endearment had been out for 10 days, and it was the number one movie in the country. Woody hadn't seen it. He was aware of it, but hadn't seen it. And he just wanted to hear me talk. And he said, what have you, what have you done? And I said, well, I was a guest criminal in Hawaii Five-0. <laughs> I'm sure that carried a lot of weight with him, right? With dead seriousness, <laughs> as if maybe that might tip the scales. <laughs> and, and he kind of looks at me, well, you know, um, and he walks away, and I go, Woody. And, and he turns back, and I say, thank you. As in, I'll never see you again. I right. know this won't work. Off he goes. The next day, uh, it's all day to convince the studio that a no-name actor can play the role. Um, they wanted him to rewrite the role for himself, and Woody just refused to do it and spent two hours in a meeting with the studio going, no. And um, they finally said, okay, and I got it. Amazing. Yeah, yeah.